Well, this was a long time coming. Worst rappers in the game, Gunna, coming soon. And I find Gunna projects so difficult to get through. I'm not even gonna lie, that's one of the reasons why my worst rappers in the game, question mark, video on Gunna isn't out yet. Yes, the worst rappers in the game on Gunna is finally here. Oh my god, it's been 11 months since the last worst rappers in the game video. Bruh. And so, to form a solid opinion on Gunna's music, I listened to Drip Season 2, Drip Season 3, and Dripper Drown 2. Then he dropped Wanna after I finished the script for this video, so I listened to that and incorporated my thoughts on it at the end of each of the segments in this video. So, after hearing all these, what did I think? And is Gunna one of the worst rappers in the game? Well, this is CDTV Productions, and let's talk about it. When I made my first me, 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 I ain't panic, I ain't panic. I'm on the drink, got this here, I'm done with Zanny, done with Zanny. Is Gunna okay? Like really, I'm concerned because this man genuinely sounds like he's disappearing as time goes on. I've said this before in a video, but he legit gets quieter and less energetic from project to project. He's like the rapping embodiment of progressing anemia. By the time he got to Dripper Drown 2, I'm assuming he started to think chill music equals rapping really quietly over beats with subdued trap drums. But loud doesn't equal funny and relaxed doesn't equal making everything Thing deathly quiet. He still did that on previous mixtapes, sure, but not to the overly abundant level he does on that project. I guess you could say it's him settling into a specific sound, but it's not all that stand out to me. Don't get me wrong though, that style can work on certain tracks. For example, on With It, I feel like his near invisible delivery genuinely works to make that one relaxing. I see you with it, I'm with it, my nigga, let's get it. Barrel got hundreds and fifties. I'm too familiar, admit it, I'm truly committed. He sounds like he's kind of floating on that beat, giving me that chill vibe that people always say they get from Gunna, and I, I feel, feel like, like I'm floating, floating on it too. too. This delivery also sounds pretty good on IDKY too, also due in part to there being a little bit more of some type of melody present in Gunna's voice on that track. And that's not common because Gunna specializes in what I like to refer to as the lazy melody. There's barely anything there, but he just kind of shifts his voice to a higher pitch or just kind of drags his words out a little bit. And that's it. There's seemingly no real effort put into it. It's just a slightly more melodic version. And I mean, I mean slightly more melodic version of his regular voice. It also seems like it doesn't really matter what the beat sounds like. Nowadays, he just has like three different deliveries that he alternates between, and he'll use those interchangeably on every track, no matter what kind of tone the instrumental sets. There's the aforementioned, slightly higher pitched, lazy melody voice. What is essentially his talking voice. And a deeper version of his voice. Keep hard, cook, I'm at it while I write me time for, for show real love. Maybe if you're someone who likes Gunna's music, you find this chill. But for me, that just results in a sound that is unengaging 90% of the time. And my issue isn't with Gunna being chill, necessarily. Chill music can still engage you, but Gunna relays a bored feeling to me more than anything else. He just sounds completely spiritless a lot of the time. He didn't always sound this way though. Like I said at the start of this segment, his voice seems to be fading over time. As on Drip Season 2, there are some highlights where he seems a bit more emphatic and a bit more outgoing going with his vocals. Just listen to Japan. How often do you hear Gunna with that type of energy now? I'm not saying he's like that on every track there. Naturally, it does have quite a lot of dull moments in terms of delivery too, but he definitely has more life on Drip Season 2 than his following mixtapes, where he decided to essentially settle into one singular style. Look, I don't think his voice is awful, and he's definitely more palatable than other rappers we've covered in this series vocally, such as Lil Xan or Kodak Black. But I feel like as time goes on, Gunna has toned down his delivery so much to the point where I don't feel much of anything when listening to his music. There are moments where he can deliver a nice, subtly melodic hook that works with the beat, like on Money Don't Change You or Out The Hood, 
But man, he, he doesn't make his projects easy to sit through. And then, after all this stuff I've said, wanna dropped. This this is the wanna segment. So did that project change anything I had to say in this segment? Everything I've said so far has just been based off of the, the first three projects. When it comes to his voice, no, not really. It's just like the Apple Music description for the album says. The Atlanta MC claimed that Wanna represents an alternate identity, a chance to step away from the franchises that made his name Drip Season and Dripper Drown. Thankfully for Gunna fans, the MC we get in Wanna isn't all that different from the man who taught us the meaning of drip. In other words, it's the same shit with a different name. I mean, there were a few tracks on here where I liked Gunna vocally in a similar way to With It, where he delivered them calmly in the right way to make the tracks actually sound chill, such as Do Better or Weirdly I'm On Some, which is a very dead sounding track, but there's something about that that just actually sounds calm to me. He feel like I'm on some, home back down to no one, maybe by the rose coming. I wanna see you do better. His voice just feels perfectly compatible with the beat on Do Better. That's a song I like a lot. And then on the other hand, there's a few incredibly off-putting deliveries. For example, his delivery on the hook of Gimmick, where you can tell he's trying to sound more energetic and amped up, but instead it just sounds like he's straining his voice. But yeah, overall he really has continued to settle into a specific sound with his voice on one. If you like Gunna, I'm sure you'll like what he does on Wanna, but it's just not something that I like all that much. For the voice segment at least, Wanna did not affect my overall rating for Gunna's voice, which is a 4 out of 10. There's nothing overly off-putting or shockingly bad about his rapping, it's just very underwhelming, and to me personally, feels like it mostly misses what Gunna is actually aiming for with it. They say Lil D, I've been looking like dollars. Pinched out how waters are just like a golfer. We riding foreigns, ain't no more impossible. Ah, <sighs> the flow. The flow. The goddamn Gunna flow. In one sense, Gunna has developed a sort of signature flow. Like, if I was to imitate a Gunna flow, I'm sure you'd be able to tell. And I just referred to it twice as a Gunna, Gunna flow. flow. But. Is a signature flow all that great when it's used to the extent that you know what Gunna is gonna rap like before he even starts rapping? He's playing it way too safe for me. On so many tracks, Gunna just sounds like he's rapping with the cruise control turned on. The beat is the road carrying him and he just rolls across it without paying much mind to changing the speed every so often just to keep things moving. There's kind of a cool contrast when you first listen to him with how quiet and subdued his vocals are compared to him typically using using either the short bursts or constant run-on sentences of mid-tempo flows, with syllables almost falling over each other in the bars, but you get used to it really, really fast. It killed Drip Season 2 for me, that was a project that had potential, but Gunna's flow was just very unchanged throughout the whole thing. And I mean, the same could be said for all his projects. I guess he is getting a bit better at evolving his particular flow style as time goes on, but again, just like his voice, it is not something that's engaging to me. For me personally, I tend to get bored without some strong variety and flows throughout a project. Unless your signature flow is outstanding, it's not gonna keep me engaged. And even worse, throughout his projects or in certain features, there's some moments where it feels like he's almost just teetering on the edge of falling into offbeat territory, to the level that it's surprising he just didn't rewrite or re-record those parts. They don't sound good, and it sounds really clumsy. Sure, it's not all bad. I think the way he rapped his words was enjoyable on parts of songs like Shopping. A very small part of, of the second verse on Mistress. Thank you, Rose. Chip thick hips, hot like stove. Hips, I tip, pale like a toe. Tip, no pimp. But I got and the flow on Richard Millie playing, which just works very well with the production. Still hit your block, leave a man down, shoot like I'm shooting at a range. Quick, I can let it bang, bang. 
rich nigga, I let her keep change. But unfortunately, even on some of those songs, he only flows differently for a very small portion of it before falling right back into his flow habits. For me personally, during the majority of his solo stuff, nothing really captivated me about Gunna's flow. Honestly, I feel like the main time that Gunna impresses me with his rapping is either when he's featured on a track or when he's following the lead of what a feature on his track is doing. Because when he's featured, it makes him go a little bit outside of his comfort zone. The beats aren't always necessarily what he's used to, so it sounds like he tries a bit more to kind of try something different with the beats that are placed in front of him. A great example of this is Turks, which yeah, it is produced by Wheezy and he's a frequent collaborator with Gunna, but it definitely sounds different to an instrumental that you typically would hear Gunna over. And he rides the beat on that one really nicely. He's also really nice on Pop Out Again, First Class, the Dior remix, and the first half of his verse on I Wanna Rock, before the second half where he settles into his regular patterns again. And notice on most of those is because he starts by following the flow that was set by the main artist. Not every feature is great or even all that good but I'm just saying that's when Gunna is typically his most enjoyable to me. And now it's time once again for the Wanna segment. Did this change my thoughts on his flows? Again, not really. But there were a few verses where Gunna flowed really nicely that I do want to mention. I always bought my head when hearing his sort of faster flows on the verses on Nasty Girl. Feigning has some very smooth flows too. I believe that's supposed to be pronounced as fiending, but that's, that's not how it's spelled. And he also raps very smoothly on the space between the kicks on Blindfold. I was in the trenches rocking Gucci and Dior. BT was tripping high thinking in the war. You got me a nut. Outside of those, many of the flows on here sounded super familiar. And there's the song Wanna, which has some of his most deathly boring flows, where he raps two syllables at a time. It's kind of similar to Speed It Up, but even more boring. So yeah, it's safe to say I'm not the biggest fan of Gunna's flow. So for my personal rating of it, I'm going to give him a 3.5 out of 10. I can give credit to the fact that he has a relatively identifiable signature flow, but I'm not the type of person who is a big fan of rappers who generally settle very strongly into the same pattern all the time. And Gunna is most definitely that. His flow being so unchanging and often predictable is one of the main things that makes me feel like Gunna is pretty dull, with him only stepping it up and adapting slightly on featured verses most of the time. There is one section of lines that stands out to me more than anything when talking about Gunna's lyrics, and it's this small sequence of lines from the song Baby Birkin. Because these lines right here, which you can read for yourself, perfectly call to attention one of the weakest elements about Gunna's songwriting. The problem being that Gunna clearly puts no consideration into what lines go back to back, resulting in disasters like this one. Yes, it obviously doesn't mean what it looks like if you take it out of context, but it shouldn't be that easy to take two full lines out of context. And it wouldn't be that easy if Gunna just looked at the way he wrote it down for like 10 seconds. And the only reason I'm talking about this line so much is because that problem applies to all of Gunna's music. There really is no consideration for the most part on which lines are next to each other. This is proof that he just slaps random lines together without even thinking about it. My theory is that Gunna has a notebook and in this notebook written down is a few thousand lines, a couple hundred for each different flow that he uses. And these lines are all split between the categories sex, fashion, aka drip, cars, and jewelry. He then picks these lines at random, mashes them together, and at the end of the process, a Gunna song is made. I don't want Gunna to be a lyricist or anything, but I also don't think putting thought into linking your lines together is too much to ask for. And to expand on what I just said, I really don't think it's necessary to be a bar-focused lyricist 
to score highly in this series. I'm also considering the personality they have in their lyrics, their unique quirks, and what makes them stand out lyrically from other rappers. And as for Gunna, he has next to nothing that is compelling about how he writes his songs. They're near devoid of personality. I know comparing them to Young Thug may seem overused at this point, and me even making that comparison might have made you roll your eyes, but you just have to listen to or read his lyrics to realize that Gunna is essentially Young Thug lyrically, but without the eccentricity and downright weirdness that makes Thug a unique and interesting songwriter. For what it's worth, I do think at this point that Gunna is his own artist compared to Thug, the two have a different sound, but lyrically I think the influence is just so overly clear. He talks about the same fashion brands as Young Thug, instead of slime being a common thing in his lyrics and album titles, Gunna changed it to drip. He has some of the same weird sex bars, but without the strange humour that Thug has and his. It does make sense since Young Thug was Gunna's mentor, but I don't think Gunna does enough to distance himself from Young Thug lyrically and stand out. The only upside I can see to this is that when Gunna has a lyric that's at least vaguely witty, I appreciate it so much for saving me from the barren wasteland of dry lyrics. You know, such as the I eat goat and I am what I ate bar on Outstanding. It's a, it's a somewhat witty way of showing his confidence in his rapping. It, it's nothing crazy, but that's, that's as good as it gets. And I should mention that I also appreciate the very few times where he dips into something just a little bit more personal, like some of the lines on the song Phase. So, did wanna change this? Well, you guys aren't gonna believe this, but I am ecstatic to say that it did not. Not at all. Although I will say I do appreciate the lyrical content on songs like Don't Play Around or Far, which do at least have some lines in each of them that talk about Gunna's rise to success from poverty. Poverty, no cash for the gas stove, it is his poverty. In the hood selling trash, press the gas, giving mama money on the lease. Those are the only ones that I really feel like are worth mentioning here though. Two out of ten for the lyrics of Mr. Gunna Wanna. The best way to describe how I feel about Gunna's production is to just go through it album by album. Drip Season 2 is definitely the most unfocused one in terms of its production. It doesn't really have a single sound that it sticks to with its beats like the other projects I listened to for this video. And this means it's a pretty mixed bag honestly. There's high points, there's low points, and overall it's an album where the production just isn't really something I focused on much to be honest. It was very standard stuff, but the harder and darker songs like Japan, Beat the Case and Mirrors were cool instrumentally. YSL sounded fantastic too, I just don't think it really fit Gunna all that well. Playboy Carty features on it and it really sounds like his song. The production for this mixtape overall wasn't bad and leans closer to being good production than being awful. It's just nothing that stood out to me too much in the beat department. As for Drip Season 3. That was honestly a project that I felt was severely dragged down by the production. Which is super surprising because Wheezy, Turbo, and Metro Boomin appear with production credits all over the tracklist. It should have been good, but I feel like they just didn't really know how to work best with Gunna at that point. Just like I mentioned with his voice earlier, it seemed on this project that the producers just figured, oh, we're, we're gonna make this album some chill trap music by either making the drums really quiet, or by doing the opposite and making the drums pretty strong while the melodies are so low key that they're almost invisible. And that was my biggest issue with this project's beats. So many songs had almost non-existent melodies buried behind the drums. And that sound is so incredibly boring to me. I already find Gunna to be a pretty bland rapper, so when the beats don't have stronger melodies, or at least a few noticeable layers to carry the lazier melodies of his voice, it puts me to sleep. The beats weren't horrible on Drip Season 3, I'm just surprised at how boring and lifeless a lot of them felt. There's only really one big highlight production wise for me on that project, and that was Pedestrian. Oh, nice, I just realized I had the, the lyrics. Slade. 
up for this this segment so far. Look, it's been a while since I've recorded a video. I'm just trying to get used to all this again. But on the plus side, this was improved on quite a fair bit in Dripper Drown 2. One of the best produced Gunner projects so far in my opinion. It's not perfect, and the issue of some beats just having melodies too subtle that they're barely even there is still present on tracks like One Call and Cash War, but it takes a lot of steps in the right direction. Wheezy and Turbo work way better with Gunna on this one than on Drip Season 3, providing a few more layers within the beats and making the melodies and chords more noticeable. And that makes this project significantly better in terms of Gunna's beat selection. Sure, the beats on this album could be divided entirely into two categories, those categories being guitar-based beats and watery synth-based beats, so there isn't really a whole lot of variety, but I can't deny that a lot of it sounds very solid and catchy. Favourites of mine being Richard Milley Plain, Baby Birkin, and Who You Foolin'. That last one is just executed beautifully. Weezy out of here. Weezy out of here. His beat selection is getting better and more defined as his career goes on, and I'm glad to say that this was something that continued on one of. For once, this album actually increased my rating, if only slightly, for one of these segments. There is some production across this project that I absolutely love, and it's great to see Wheezy getting better and better at making beats for Gunna as his projects go on. It opens up with Argentina, another instrumental which has that same kind of oriental sound to the strings that Who You Foolin' had, and it sounds so damn smooth and elegant. There's also Met Gala. That, that beat is a nice one. The instruments on it almost have this kind of 90s glimmer to them and it just it just sounds so lovely. The beat for Far is brilliant too, it's just a shame that Gunna uh, massacred it with his vocals. vocals. I would say it's mostly good from a production standpoint, however there are a few beats on here that are a bit of a throwback to the dull, empty sound that was found on Drip Season 3, mixed with some of the more lifeless beats on Drip or Drown 2, such as on Addies or Money on the Way. There's also some I feel mixed on, such as Top Floor, which basically feels like the Gunna version of Hot by Young Thug, which was a song that Gunna himself featured on. It has the same elements to that beat, they're just a lot more subtle and quiet on here, and it results in a track that sounds pretty limp. And also, Rockstar Bikers and Chains is another one that I want to point to as having a great beat. I just feel like it, it would have been much better used by someone other than Gunna. I mean, I could say that for a lot of Gunna beats, but it's especially true for this one with how anthemic it sounds. For the most part though, Gunna picked some great beats for Wanna. Overall, I'm gonna give Big Gunna Wanna the Drip Stunner a 7 out of 10 for his production. The majority of that score comes from how catchy a solid chunk of the beats on Drip or Drown 2 are, the mostly good production on Wanna, and also from the fact that Drip Season 2 and Drip Season 3 aren't awful instrumentally, just very underwhelming for the most part. The key point is that he is improving with his production choices and developing a sound that is recognisable without being too formulaic or boring yet, and I really can't knock that. Oh. So, as you can tell from my rating so far, I'm not the biggest fan of Gunna as a rapper, and my enjoyment of his songs hinges very heavily over the production that he raps over. So with that in mind, the way that I would rank the four Gunna projects I heard from best to worst would be Wanna at the top, Drip or Drown 2, Drip Season 2, and then Drip Season 3 as the worst. I don't love any of them really, but ask me to listen to a Gunna project for the full runtime on the spot, and Wanna is my least painful option. This is the album with the most highlights for me. Looking past my general dislike of Gunna's delivery, Argentina, Feigning, Blindfold, I'm On Some, and Do Better are some nice cuts on here that I could see myself replaying at least a few times. It is a kind of odd project in the way that it feels mostly like a bit of Drip or Drown 2 mixed with Drip Season 3, and then a few tracks of something new mixed in there, but at least it keeps the sound somewhat interesting throughout, at least relative to other Gunna projects. It's a weird one to be honest, but it's his most enjoyable project so far. Drip or Drown 2 is also not too 
bad to make it through. Like I said, that's got some of my favourite production that Gunna's used so far, and like Wanna, it actually has songs that I can remember. For me personally, it's pretty easy to forget what individual tracks on Drip Season 2 and 3 sound like. Whereas, at least with Dripper Drown 2, I can look at the track list and for most songs, I could recall how they sound in my head. Drip Season 2 wasn't as dull as the third installment in that series, but it still isn't very easy for me to sit through, especially with Gunna's flow being so one note throughout the whole thing. He's a bit more energetic on certain tracks, which is cool, but as a whole it's an album with a good chunk of skippable songs that don't need to be there. And then, as for Drip Season 3, I think some of my notes on it that I wrote down on my phone perfectly represent how I feel about a lot of it. Beat is alright, but fuck me, Gunna is such a charisma drain. Like, what are you doing when Nav is easily the most charismatic vocalist on your track? I like it because it's mostly Nav, to be honest. Okay, Gunna's second verse is kinda bouncy though. His voice just doesn't mesh with the beat again. It sounds like the vocals from another song thrown over a separate beat. It's... No joke how much his vocals don't work with the instrumental. <laughs> this and the previous song are the most boring ones so far. Why are the melodies and chords so quiet in almost all these tracks? The piano is so deep in the mix here. Standard gun affair, really. Something about his slightly higher pitched delivery where it sounds like he's straining to sing really annoys me. Again, it's relatively standard trap instrumental with not a whole lot of layers or elements to it, and that is boring. Yeah, it's safe to say I really didn't enjoy that project. At all. So yeah, for this final enjoyment rating, I'm gonna give Gunna a 3.5 out of 10. Money, hold up, hold up, gotta, cut a, hold up, ladder, orders, hold up, dollars, quarters. So, Overall, the man with jeans three sizes too small on him at all times scores a 20 out of 50 here. This puts him at the 16th spot out of 28 on my ranking of every rapper I've covered in this series so far, above the saviour of white people Tom McDonald and just below Blueface, who I probably want to re-rank a little bit soon. Definitely not the worst rapper around or anything, but Gunna is definitely one of the more uninteresting and bland rappers for me personally that I've covered in this series so far. So that one took a while. I'm assuming this video is probably going to come out around 30 to 40 minutes long, so if you're still watching, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. As you can tell by me teasing this many times, this is a video I've been working on for so long and it feels good to finally have it recorded and finally be able to put it out there. There's a lot of stuff I want to say in this outro because I haven't uploaded in, in, in around a month, but I think it's best just not to say much and to continue trying to put out videos at a more frequent rate. Hope you guys are all doing well and I hope you're all holding up decently with the quarantine and everything going on. And that's all I have to say for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. And this is CDTV Productions, signing out.